For AMD in particular, we think that their big issue is crypto GPU. These are GPUs that were used for Ethereum mining. They had a huge first quarter of the year, uh, and we're still feeling the after effects. We think that their sales were actually 400 million higher in the first quarter. We've worked through about 250 of that overhang, but there's still another shoe to drop. We think it could actually happen in the first quarter for them. So you think this is a bursting of the crypto bubble that we saw earlier in the year and is playing out in the results? That's right. So in the intermediate term for AMD, we think they still have one more quarter of pain to take here. Uh, in the first quarter, we think they might actually miss that guide. Uh, after that, it's a different story, and a lot of the stuff that Lisa's talking about, we're actually quite positive on. And Mitch, what do you take uh, in terms of the read through to Intel? I mean, that stock's up about 3.5% before it reports earnings after the bell later today. I think there had been an expectation that because of some of the issues at Intel, that AMD would take more market share. It doesn't really seem like that was necessarily the case in this quarter. Well, I would, I would actually take the other side of that argument. I would say that they're actually gaining share against Intel. You can see it in the server business, which I think was up 50% sequentially for AMD. And then secondly, the PC client side is what uh, Lisa Sue was referring to when she said she had good results there. The cryptocurrency side was obviously a debacle, and I think they mismodeled that. But when you look at it, uh, starting in Q1 of 2019, which is kind of in the call, AMD will come out with a 7 nanometer chip, which will be cheaper, faster, smaller, and better. And we think they'll probably gain shares starting in Q1. I think Q4 and Q3 is kind of a, a wash. But once we get to Q1, you'll probably start to see the share gains against Intel. Chris, what's the overall semiconductor narrative then? Uh, LAM Research had this optimistic uh, read through into 2019. Texas Instruments, very different. AMD, I guess you got to put that aside because they're a challenger in this market. Do we need to wait for Intel uh, to, to really get a good sense of what's happening in chips overall? But they've got their own issues. Yeah, I, I think they do have their own issues. For, for broad-based semi-guys, what we've seen is lead times for the entire sector increase over the past two years. Likely with those increased lead times, you have increased inventory across the supply chain. And so right now, we may have a little bit of a demand sort of blip here, but we have compounding that demand blip we have these inventory issues. And it could take as long as one or two quarters to fully work through that for broad-based guys. I, I had to laugh. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, maybe a few months, that people were writing notes about how cyclicality in the sector was <laughs> going to be, had been flattened out. We would no longer have to live with that. That was crazy. Surprise. Yeah. At semis, yeah. Before we let you both go, Mitch, uh, the SMH Semiconductor ETF yesterday, worst day in 10 years. Obviously, we've seen a sell-off in this part of tech in general. What do you like right now? Is there anything you would buy? Yeah, so I think the way to play semis, what you got to do is get on EDA, which is actually Synopsys and Cadence, which are two of the companies that are tied to R&D spending. I think second, you want to own AMD starting Q1. And then third, I'm still kind of just negative on the overall semi space. We downgraded the semi-cap equipment space back in June. And so I think that's going to still see some pain. But I think that's where you go. You go to EDA and semiconductors. And then on top of that, you start to own AMDs to around Q1 is ideally the, the right time frame.